Leading off for the Patriots, the pitcher, number one, Dylan Joins. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the City of Champions Baseball Tournament here in Artesia, New Mexico. I'm Gene Dow, and joining us for play-by-play -play is the voice of the Bulldogs, <coughs> pre Joby Hobbling, Mr. Jim Wilburn. Good morning, or good evening, Jim. Well, it feels like morning. <laughs> Oh, how you doing, Gino? It's good to be back. It, well, it's great to have you. I uh, called you up a couple of weeks ago and said, hey, you want to come do some ball games with us? And, and it didn't take you too long to say yes. Oh, I always enjoy coming back to RTG and get to see some people who I haven't seen for a long, long time. And, uh, it's, uh, it's a special place. It always has been, always will be in my life and my family's life. Gosh, it doesn't seem possible we've been gone 10 years now. Is that right? Uh, we were trying to think the other day. Uh, well, going on in Lubbock. Uh, you know, how long it's been since uh, we moved to Lubbock. And, uh, 2013, August of 2013. Wow. Well, maybe we should tell them what's going on on the field. Well, <laughs> we've got the very first ball game uh, that the Artesia Bulldogs going to play. And, you know, I used to, when we had a program, that I would know which invitational tournament this is it's just the invitational tournament you know. yeah but uh, it's the first game uh, for the Bulldogs they're playing the Neomir Patriots and at the plate for the Patriots is Diamond Jones he's the uh, pitcher the opposing pitcher tonight and uh, he is facing Brent Usherwood for the Artesia Bulldogs count three and one we're not on radio tonight so we don't have to Running commentary. <laughs> yeah, we have Texas Tech playing NC State tonight. That hasn't started yet, folks. Uh, 7.40, so it is about 10, 30 minutes. So Jones draws a walk, so uh, leadoff batter for Mira Mira is on first base. I don't know. Uh, used to, there would be... Brackets up here, and we'll tell you who won the game's prior. Well, I think I made copies of brackets. I can probably fill it out. Because the softball's going on, too. Which is high and tight for ball one. Batting is Blaze Chavez from the end there. Blaze is the uh, first baseman. Next pitch. Just outside. A little tight strike zone here tonight. That can look like a pretty good pitch. Two balls, no strikes. Nobody out there. First pitch. Stretch by Ashwood and the pitch. One thing that hasn't changed since I left Gene is the uh, appearance of this field. Boy, it's beautiful. One of the nicer high school playing surfaces in the state and part of this part of the country. Next pitch is taken high inside for three balls and one strike now. So Usherwood in danger of walking the first two batters he faces here this afternoon or this evening. And we had timeout taken just before the <laughs> Sorry about that, Jim. I was going to mention <laughs> uh, something new. They've got a uh, television down in the concession stand, and they can hear what we're talking about. Next the Patriots about. center fielder, number four, Brady Antonio. And uh, all those beautiful people down there, hello. That's right. <laughs> and so in the earlier games when we just had the camera pointing at the field, I had the score bug down in the lower left-hand corner. But now that we've got a cameraman, 
I've moved it up to the upper right hand. Oh, corner. and they didn't like that. No, no, they wanted me to put it back down in the corner. <laughs> they were used to it then. Yeah. Uh, we've got, ooh, that pitch almost hit the batter in the head. The batter is Antonio, Brady Antonio. Dylan Jones and Blaze Chavez have walked from him here, so they're running some first and second. Nobody out as we play here in the top of the first inning. So don't be messing with things and leave them like they were. In there for call, strike one, bluffed the bunt, drew his bat back. Seth Jones, the cleanup batter, will be up next for the Patriots. And the pitch. Swing and miss. Strike two. They can make the scoreboard smaller, Jim. Well, you know, I can't see it. So <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't matter to me. <laughs> Let's see. That's a pip. A swing and a miss. For strike three. First strikeout of the ball game for Mr. Usherwood. Now batting for the Patriots, the shortstop, number five, Seth Torres. Did he swing? He swung and he missed. That's an out. That is out number one. A swinging strikeout. Four K. I remember that. Yeah, I, I have to learn what it, you know, forward K, backwards K, all that good stuff. Pitch is high for ball one to Seth Jones. He's the cleanup runner. For near, near. They only have 11 players suited out here. Tonight, so. Two over the minimum. <laughs> <laughs> at least they've got enough. That's right. <laughs> Swing and a miss for strike one. The count evens it. Man. One out, runners at first and second. Curveball swung and popped up in the air. Second baseman Wentis goes back to Mexico. Front number two. Second baseman, huh? Yes, sir. And everybody held up. To the plate for the Patriots. And second baseman went number three, Diego <laughs> Gonzalez. <laughs> oh. So he's still playing a lot of golf? Uh, I was up until my ideal. Uh, I had. I surgery back the first of this month. And haven't played since then, but normally I play two to three times a week. Pitch in there for call struck one to Gonzalez, Diego Gonzalez, second baseman. He's just to play for me. And me. Yeah, got a couple of former artisans that have come over and joined our group. Robert Horner plays with us and should four in the story playing with us. Hmm. It's kind of a, a weird group. When I first went over there, it was uh, Art Carter and, and Randy Fowler. They were coaches, basketball coaches at Portales and Ludington when I coached here at Artesia. But uh, that's how our group started, and then we picked up people that would move to town. And then there's a swing and miss for strike three. So Gonzalez goes down swinging for out number three. And Niamir scores no runs and no hits. And no errors. Two runs left on base. Score after half an inning. Bulldogs coming to bat. Niamir zero. Well, we're going to take a break and listen to these good words. And we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs>
Welcome back here to Brainerd Baseball Park in Artesia, New Mexico. I'm Gene Dow, and that wonderful voice that you're hearing is Jim Wilbur. Yeah. Um, I'll quickly finish up my story about my golf employment. Art Carter uh, passed away years ago, and Randy Fowler passed away this last year. So it's now just the people that we picked up from Patalis and Clovis, and now the couple of Artesia guys. So. We have got uh, quite a group that we play with, and it's really enjoyable. Yeah. Right, let's look at the uh, Artesia Bulldogs and their uh, adding for it will be this way. Jeff Fuentes will lead it off. He's number four, plays seven breaks. Naya Strata, will bat second, he's the shortstop. Batting third, we'll be dealing with Pacheco, with DH. Batting fourth, Marky's young son, Jack Byers. Jack is the third baseman. Jesse Armandettis will be in center field. Ricky Armandettis will be at first base. Yeah. Jeff Whitmire will be, be in right field, right field, followed by Aiden Huffman. Frankie Belindo and Usherwood. No score as we go into the bottom half of the first inning. Okay, focus is on manual. Yeah, hey, I was on that cinema thing. Oh, okay. Bulldogs and the I thought they made all the records up in the cinema. Yeah, so why is it not? Oh, let's focus. There's the moon. Okay, well, let's. I don't know. Well, let's see here. First pitch is taken inside for going on. Balance, ABC. Maybe you've got a couple of runners on. Two leadoff walks, or a leadoff walk, and a second batter walked. Then they went down in order after that. And the pitch. Swing on the ground ball, third baseman. Jones uh, fires it across. That uh, is mainly Caden Deanley. A nice play there by Caden. Up next for the Bulldogs, the shot. shortstop, number two, Naya Strata. And we have one out for the Bulldogs. It's fun to hit the ball. Yeah, well, I thought we fixed that. Yeah, we did. Five, three for the first out. That brings up Naya Strata. That's from the right side. Well, that's on, uh, and the pitch. How do we get it off? Of outside. Oh, <laughs> outside corner. <laughs> Call strike one. I don't know how we get it off of. Swing on, popped up on the right side. Count will go to 0 and 2. I'm sorry, I thought we had it set. Yeah. Fly ball down the right field line. Right fielder moves over, stands underneath it, and I guess he lost it in the lights. It looked like he was all camped out, ready to get it, but it all hit the ground out there. So just a long strike. First strike two. Sorry about that, Jim. We were trying to get our focus set right on the camera. Focus. And none of the buttons that were there last time are there this time. <laughs> so what did our first batter do? Uh, grounded out to the third baseman. Okay. Is this the second batter? It is. Naya Estrada? Naya Estrada. He counts over two. Call strike three. Up next for the ball, Two number up. nine, Damon Pacheco. So I'm caught up. <laughs> <laughs> Did I miss any stories? Uh, no, I just kind of polished off. That thing. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Mm -hmm. 
two good friends uh, gone too early. But both good guys. You know, that usually happens. There's that. There's been quite a few folks. Yep. Batter now for the Bulldogs is Pacheco. He takes the first pitch for call strike one. He's the DH for the Bulldogs tonight. Batting for Usher. Foul back to the screen to the outside for strike two. And the 0-2 pitch, way outside for ball. I don't think I got that figured out properly. Well, look at you. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, in the last, uh, well, I don't want to talk about that. No. Nah. You know, that's a sad thing. Yeah. Pitch is outside for ball two, and the count evens are two balls and two strikes. Got, uh, <clears throat> The older you get, the more the more you have to talk about it. <laughs> and I don't like it either. Well, I saw one of your old friends uh, who's back in coaching over in Lovington. Uh, who's that? Chief Bridgeford. Oh, yeah. Chief was on the very first team I ever coached. Swing and a miss for strike three. And the Bulldogs go down in order. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left after one. Zero. zero. All right, Jim, we'll take a break, and we'll have more baseball from Brainerd Baseball Park in just a moment. What's up, Artesia? Andy and Jen here from Faith Kids, and uh, we have some exciting news coming your way. Yes, right here in Morris Field on March the 30th, we will be here for our annual extravaganza from 10 to 1. We're going to have hot dogs, snow cones, mini donuts, Wild West sodas, McAllister sweet tea, lots of yummy stuff. We're also going to have 60,000 eggs for the kids to hunt. Hunt. And then we'll have 20 plus jumpies. It's going to be so much fun for the whole family. It is a completely free event. So make sure to join us here at Morris Field, March 30th, 10 to 1. Welcome back here to Brandon Baseball Park. I'm Gene. Jim Wilburn is with you. No score as we go to inning number two. Leading Gage the Sellers will lead it off. Number seven, Gage Sellers. Oh, Mira, Mira. He's a catcher, a little short fellow. And the first pitch by Usher Wood to him is in there. The call struck him. Still uh, looking for our first base hit of the ball game. Patriots had two base runners, both on walks. The Bulldogs went down in order in their half of the first inning, so no base hits so far. <laughs> My software is arguing with me as to who I've, I've added the player. <laughs> Swing in the foul back. And uh, let's see. A swing and a hoop? A foul man. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no balls and two strikes. Swung on high, hopper down to the first baseman. He's got to back up to make the play. Steps on the ball. Unassisted at first base, but Ricky on the base for the first half. Okay. Jaden Garcia will come to the plate. He's the left fielder. Coming to the plate, left fielder number six, Jaden Garcia. There's number six on the back of his purple jersey. Bats from the left side. Usherwood winds and swings. Struck one. Let's try this again. And the old one. Swing and miss for strike two. Usherwood has walked two and struck out one. Oh, excuse me, he's got two strikeouts. 
Wow. I think that was fouled off. I heard the clink. Hopefully you've uh, remembered to park far away. Yeah. Across the street? Across the street. <laughs> and the pitch. Curveball swung on foul off the left side. <clears throat> That's headed for somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things they did add, Jim, is you look over your left shoulder on the wall. There, up on the, behind you. Mm -hmm. up, up on the wall behind you here in the press box. Yeah. See that big box up there? Yeah. That's an air conditioner. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. And a heater. A heater. No. <laughs> <laughs> Folks may or may not remember this. I moved to Artesia in 1991. Pop up to the left side and just up against the screen. We're going to try to get to it. And it was in, uh, well, March 1st, I think it was, when I started. And matter of fact, I remember the first time uh, people would tell me, you got to listen to Jim, and that's a great job doing announcing. Her ball is high. And uh, you were going to do a basketball game. Mm -hmm. So Alana went into the Furs Grocery Store. You remember the Furs Grocery mm -hmm. Store? Strike three. And uh, so I'm going to sit in the car. I'm going to listen to Jim. Everybody says Jim's great announcer. I'd like to hear him. <laughs> now game. batting right fielder, number 17. For those who don't remember, the first Brown. grocery store is where the Holly Frontier corporate headquarters is in the Luke Whale uh, Center. So I sit in the radio, and the guy comes on, and he says, it's time now for Artesia Bulldog basketball. Here's oh, Jim Wilson. And I don't hear anything, and then I hear, hello? <laughs> hello? Am I on? <laughs> yes, you're on. Go. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the first broadcast I heard you do. And you thought, that guy's a door. Call this back to you. No, you, were, you did a fantastic job. Wasn't what you were expecting. Well, the execution. Paul Stranger. The execution of the broadcast was not. <laughs> well, uh, those were the days, <laughs> <laughs> my friend. That's <laughs> right. Well, that was it. That was the end of the inning. That was it. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left. Score after one and one. Zero, zero. The need to grow past our basic capabilities and experience the impossible will forever keep aviation technology evolving. Within the Aviation Maintenance Technology Program at ENMU Roswell, students thrive knowing that the faculty and community are supporting their success. ENMU Roswell is dedicated to empowering students through hands-on skills training in a nurturing environment. To learn more, contact us today. Si está buscando una carrera que ofrezca desafíos, propósitos y oportunidades al mismo tiempo que lo valore a usted y el equilibrio entre su vida laboral y personal, lo invitamos a comenzar su viaje en Coterra Energy. Aquí, en Coterra Energy, nuestras operaciones están creciendo rápidamente y estamos buscando personas calificadas para puestos de campo y de oficina. Los nuevos empleados son elegibles para recibir un bono de inicio de sesión y una vez contratados, recibirán un paquete de beneficios inigualable para ver todos los puestos vacantes. Etiqueta, producir energía, empoderar a las personas, construir comunidad. Envía a Coterra al 71441 para comenzar su viaje hoy. Coterra Energy es un empleador que ofrece igualdad de oportunidades. Leading off for the Bulldogs, third baseman number 18, Welcome Jack back Fires. here to Brainerd Baseball Park in Artesia, New Mexico. I'm Gene Dow, along with Jim Wilburn, and we go to the bottom of the second. Bulldogs coming to bat. No score in this ball. And Jack Byron's going to lead it off for the Bulldogs. Bass on the right side. He's the third baseman for the Bulldogs here this evening. So you were telling me 
that was the first year you had uh, you'd retired from coaching, right? Right. Ninety-one. <coughs> Which is high and tight, and Jack. Yep. So that's why I didn't know <laughs> really a whole lot about how. It, well, everything we did back then was just on the telephone line. Yep. And I didn't ever know if we were on or not. <laughs> <laughs> like right now. Yeah. <laughs> Are we on? Are we on? <laughs> Are we there? <laughs> Pitches foul back to the screen. Use the count from one and one to Jack. You remember when you went to Lovington to do a basketball game and there was nobody at the radio station? Oh, there was somebody there. They were asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> For all two. And you were to show. Uh, yes, we went to see Star Wars in the theater. It was with Danny Parker. <laughs> two balls and a strike. Swung on, ground ball down the third baseline, but just fouled in his account of 10 and 2. Yeah. I would call every two minutes and let it rain for 20 minutes. And I started that 10 minutes before the game, and I did that until there was two minutes left in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking somebody surely will answer. Yeah, yeah that was uh, <laughs> not good. <laughs> Ground ball down the third base line again, just foul. So Jack's getting around well on the pitch, just hit on the foul. Yeah, there is a lot of horse. Jim did a basketball game in Rio Doso from a payphone. Hanging around the corner on one leg. <laughs> At the end. You remember that? Uh, yeah, how well I remember. High pop up on the infield. Second baseman coming in and drops the ball. Jack's going to be safe. That ball went a mile up in the air. Second baseman came charging. The pitcher ran over there now like he was going to catch it, Jesse but he Armin ran Davis. out of the frame. And the ball off the glove of the second baseman. As I was the Bulldogs have their first base runner as Jack is on, on the arrow. On the second baseman. Know we went to Hobbs one time and taped two phones together. One of them was a pay phone. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but I don't think you ever had to do what I did in Mountain Air. I don't know. We were doing a Lake Arthur six-man football game, and they played a playoff game in uh, Corona. Mr. Bill went with me on that trip. Pitch is high fly ball. Dead center field. Center fielder comes in, and he doesn't make the play, but they're going to get him forced out at second. Wow. Up back for the Bulldogs. Number 25, Ricky Armandadis. Uh, well, or is it in some base hit? Ian, it caught Stanley, or? It's just a base hit. It's just a base hit. Four seconds. We'll give him a single. And the runner at second is out, forced out. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. I'm glad you're here because I'm learning how to keep score. <laughs> Ricky Armandaris comes to the plate. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a cheap base hit, but I mean, the fielder just lost it in the lights. I mean, it's a, it's a dark night. And once the ball gets above these lights, it's hard to pick it up. And if he just didn't, he tried to come in on it, but just couldn't get to it. And the ball fell in there for a base hit. Now to do the game in uh, Corona, they had nothing at the press box. Matter of fact, the press box was about this deep as this one. <laughs> <laughs> and about a little wider than one of these windows. And it was raining mm -hmm. on a Friday night. I imagine that, rain in New Mexico. <laughs> it's been dry over here. Throw to first base and that one's out. And uh, so we took our remote pickup transmitter.
and a scanner. And we set the transmitter up in the press box, drove up to the school, made the phone call, and taped. Swing and a miss, and the runner, oh, was it foul ball? Foul ball. Um, got the tape out, the athletic tape, and the scanner, and we picked up the signal from the football field on the scanner, and then we taped the phone to the speaker on the scanner. And I called the radio station and said, uh, are we coming in? Yes. I said, whatever you do, under no circumstances do you hang up this phone. And you wait for me until we get done with the game. So you talk about not knowing whether <laughs> you're on the air. Did the whole football game, drove back up to the hill, got on the phone, and I said, hello. And he said, hello. <laughs> Were we on the air tonight? Yes, you were. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Swung on, ground ball out into left field. That's going to be a base hit. And that's going to go all the way to the wall out there. And they're going to hold the runner at third base. So the second base hit of the ball game by Armin Darius as he rifles one out into left field. And the runner, Armand Darius, comes all the way around to third base. So the Bulldogs have runners at first and third, one out. And to the plate comes Jeff Whitmire. Remember the time we were in Putalis and we were on this phone line? Yes, <laughs> this yes. Lady said, get off my line. <laughs> yes, that was at Blackwater Girl <laughs> football game. <laughs> well, this we're doing a football game. I don't care. This is my life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was mad. <laughs> Lady, this is an FCC regulated broadcast. If you don't get off this phone line, you're going to be in trouble with the government. I don't care. This is my phone line. And then she just kept hitting the, the key. Yeah. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Swing and a miss for strike two. on <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> And here's the bad thing. I don't know if you remember this. When we got done, we were packing up, and I was telling one of the people that worked there at the facility what had happened. And he said, well, why were you in this that booth? All the radio people are in this booth. <laughs> Grand ball to the shortstop. Long throw across. I don't know why he didn't go the short way for the easy out. But, uh, and he was safe. The runner first base <laughs> beat the, the throw by Lyle. And the Bulldogs take a lead here, one to nothing. All he had to do was flip it over to second base. On the fielder's choice. Bulldogs score a run. Huffman gets the RBI. Frankie Belindo comes to the plate. He's the number nine batter for the Bulldogs. He's so that's a fielder. fielder's choice? Yep. Okay. I'm learning. Okay, so what happened to where he scored? He went to second. Well, yep. Okay. Ground ball. Foul. Strike. Yeah, that was a fun night. But that wasn't the same night that you, uh, <laughs> well, I forget who our running back was, but he broke open a big run and <laughs> you said he faked him out of his jock strap. <laughs> they did. <laughs> yes. And about four days later, a little box came in the mail to the radio station addressed to you. <laughs> and guess what was in the box? Somebody found it. I said, is this the one you were talking about? Pitches outside. Yeah, they're not using that field anymore. Uh, Up in Pertels. Oh, no, no, they they built a, one on the campus of the college. Didn't they? It's very nice, mm -hmm. very nice field. High school uses it too. So. Mm -hmm. Pitch is low. Yeah, well, we, we drove to Clovis a couple of weeks ago, and we drove past it. That, the, the old stadium's still there. Looks oh, in yeah. pretty bad shape, but it's still it's still there. Yeah, some of the guys I play with are on the board of directors at Eastern. And they say that I think it hit him, Jim. Uh, that was ball four. Oh, well, it hit him in the dirt <laughs> for ball four. <laughs> Frankie Galindo. <laughs> so the bases are full. 
And Frankie Gunendo comes to the court. Bulldogs lead it by a score of one to nothing. I guess they have two runners. Yeah, trying to figure out the scoreboard. <laughs> yeah, me too. That doesn't jive. They have this no Stretch by Jones. And the pitch. Outside from ball one. Y'all talked the other day for a little while. Oh, uh, me and the barking guy? Yeah. yeah. He comes in every Monday. He was telling me what was fixing to happen. All over the Pickens Valley. That's right. And whose birthday it was. Radio history? I was really bored. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Bitches. <laughs> oh, no. It was, was kind of interesting. I have, you know, I, I don't think he's as old as I thought he was. You know, when he moved here, I thought he was fairly old. He does. He looks the same as he. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shame on that ball is lassoed out of the left field. That's up against the wall. One run will score. Here comes a parade. Two runs will score. And three runs will score. And he's going to fake to go to third base. Wow. A three run double to the base of the wall out there. And the Bulldogs lead it now by a score the of four. To nothing. A big power hit in the alley. Not that far from him. Four nothing. Bulldogs with a big lead here. Second inning. The window wound up at uh, second base. Back to the top of the order with Jeff Fuentes. And the pitch. In there for Carlos. Fuentes rounded out to the third base in the first at bat, so he's off for one this inning. And the pitch, runner goes. Throw is going to go out into left field, and that's going to stay around for the Bulldogs. That'll be a stolen base in there. That'll be a stolen base in there, are you right? Yeah. The catcher, I'm guessing. I think he threw it to left field. <laughs> <laughs> and old Frankie had it beat by a mile. I don't know why he went ahead and threw it, but he did. Out into left field. And the Bulldogs' lead now is five to nothing. On the pitch, ooh, almost hit him on top of the head. Oh, two of them. Well, let's see. The, I think the board is one and one. Mm, one and two. Oh, one and two. I have one and two with one out. Okay, I think I can read the scoreboard now, too. <laughs> Pitch is high. That evens it up at two and two. Well, do you remember whose brilliant idea it was to cover all these games here at the tournament? 
I don't know, but the last time I came over here, I did every game. Yeah. I don't know who, was that your run there? Yeah, well, you went along with it. <laughs> uh, I think that was 91 when we did that. I did it after I lived in Lowell. I know, I know, but I mean, the oh, first one that we did. Oh, the first one? I, I think it was oh the. I, I don't remember, Gene. That's March of 91. That was a long time ago. Oh, that was when you first came here. That's right, that's right. Yeah, you sit down there, and this was open air, no windows. And the wind would blow through. Oh. Pitches outside for ball four. Now batting for the Bulldogs, Naya Estrada. That's back when I still smoke. <laughs> I filled it up smoking. <laughs> they stayed warm. Yeah. I think one year, that didn't we have like a haboob come through here? Oh, man. It looked like uh, the end of the world. And that this old thing used to shake, and you'd think it was going to come down for sure. Conference on the mound. I, I walked by when I went to get the lineup for today, and they use it as their shed for all their field, you know, maintenance gear and everything. That was the field house. It was, yeah. And that's where Sarge took his hot dogs. Hot dogs and jalapenos. Yeah. You'd all run down there and watch the basketball games in that little field house. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like they are going to change pitchers. We don't have a number just yet. We'll, uh, number 17 is going to come in and pitch. You can see that. Well, I'm looking at a monitor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Good. But I, do I have a 17? Xavier Brown. Brown. Okay. He's 17 and now 17. He was the left field. Right field. Ah. Yeah, no, I can't see it. <laughs> I have an aide here that's helping me out. This time I'd like to Beto's thank some of the sponsors on him, uh, for tonight's tournament. <laughs> the Bar Buggy Mobile Sorry to say, Bar. I, I can't see because of my eye. But they're George Gandy Insurance. Jersey's purple and Pro the Petro. numbers are purple. How the do you see that? LA Enterprise. <laughs> I wonder if they did a straight flip-flop. And, of course, this year's main sponsor, the Artesian Moose Lodge. That I can't see. I'd like to also give a shout-out to the people in the concession stand. This is not radio. Working hard. Fake it. No. Like I used to. Oh, Gene, they can't see it. You know, and I remember that when we started streaming on the Internet. This was just audio, just the radio. And... Sometimes we get a roster. A lot of times we didn't. We had no idea who the other team was, and we didn't care. No. <laughs> needed the name, I made one up. That's right. <laughs> and then we started streaming on the internet, and I said, Jim, we got to say their names. They're listening. <laughs> Billy Russell, we don't have anybody going to school here by that name. <laughs> That. <laughs> Let's see, so five's going back to short. Three is going over to second. Well, who was it? Was the guy from the paper? Um, was it Rick? What was his name? Hassler. Rick Hassler. He always told you just to call him Smith. Yeah, Smith. And I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ron, the new pitcher, swung on and missed, and the runner goes to second with a stolen base. That runner is Jeff Fuentes. Bulldogs with the runner in scoring position again. I think he pulled the bat back. I think they called that a ball. Oh, did yeah. All right, and I Estrada is at the plate. And this, of course, Al has it wrong on the scoreboard. That pitch is outside. So it's two balls, no strikes. Just still uh, one out. And the fielder's choice in the first batter. And since then, nothing but scoring for the Bulldog. And the pitch. Swing and a high pop foul back over our head. And uh, 
score. It looks like the uh, Texas Tech game they still list is starting soon. They're supposed to start at 740. I wonder if they've held it up for the game before must have went wrong or something. Yeah. They they have that power. Yeah. <laughs> the TV network too. Swing on this. <laughs> NC State 22 and 14, Texas Tech 23 and 10. You uh, had a chance to see them play this year, in Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Watched them play several times. Pitch, curveball outside. I'll tell you, that, that McCaslin is, a, is he's the real deal. He's a player. He has got a group of players there that he has not near the talent anybody else in the league. He, he's brought them along. So he's really got a good one there. Ground ball right up the middle. Shortstop scoops, so to first. Got him. Ooh, that was a little close, but uh, Mr. Empire said he got him. Now, baby for the Bulldogs, Dalen Pacheco. And the runner does go to third. Yeah. That will bring up Pacheco, and the Bulldogs are battling around here in the second inning. Five runs to their credit and runner at third base with two out. The big hit, the Galindo double. Mm -hmm. So far. So far. Curveball stays high for goal one. Jack Byers and Jesse Armanderas getting ready to go out again here. Pitches in there. For the longest time, we were a New Mexico State great mm -hmm. And uh, when they made some changes in Crucis and just made it kind of hard for us to remain an affiliate. And uh, a lot of people suggested, why don't you cover Texas Tech? So we did. What's he saying here? Time, I guess? Time out. And they, two of their better players have been injured now for the last seven or eight rounds. Pitch is way outside, comes back to the screen. The runner's going to try and score. Here's a throw to the plate, and not in time. So the Bulldogs have scored six times here in the second. They lead it six to nothing on the wild pitch. And they can't go to two and one to check out. Two outs. The bases are clear now, and the Bulldogs lead it 6 nothing. You know, the only, only size they had has been on the bench with the boot on for the last seven or eight ball games. Yeah. We'll see how they do against the uh, NC State. State, and then the Lobos got in for the tournament this year. Yeah. A lot of people are picking the Lobo. I saw one of the announcers on ESPN picked him to go all the way to the final four. Wow. Ball four. So the Bulldogs have batted around here as Pacheco Now batting for the Bulldogs, up. Jack Byers. And Byers will come to the plate for the second time here this evening. He is on the line. I got a family to feed, ducking at Envy and Green. Lobos play tomorrow, I believe. Jack hit a pop up a mile high in the second baseman. Saw the ball pop out of his glove. There's another wild pitch as the ball goes back to the screen. And Pacheco will move on down to second base. A lot of Red Raider fans around here. There's still some Aggie fans and some Lobo fans around here. Of course, you got your Baylor fans. And Swing, Elmi, call strike. Got your OU fans. Yeah, I, uh, I uh, saw OU and Tech play softball.
Oh, you. This is tough as they were last year. Oh, my goodness. Is it baseball? No, softball. Softball, yeah. The program is tough, boy. I don't know if you saw where uh, Riley Crandall, mm -hmm. the pitcher for Baylor. That's right. Uh, I think she was the player of the week. She was. Oh. I'm trying to get out there and watch it. When they come to town. Which is high and tight to Jack. And the count will go to three and one now. Runner at third base is Pacheco. And Lofton has moved around to third base on the wild pitches. Let's see what our softball team is doing. They're playing uh, their first game tonight. Oh, strike one. Sorry. Their first uh, their in first the tournament. In the tournament, yeah. I saw when they beat Carlsbad and we're down in Las Cruces. They did, and uh, split with them Tuesday. Oh, really? Yeah, in Carlsbad. Oh, that's an accomplishment. Well, I guess uh, Artesia's softball has been just as good as Carlsbad's the last three or four or five years. Now. Yeah, and it, both teams have had, you know, dominant pitchers. Yeah. I hear they've got an eighth grader this year. Yeah, playing pretty good. It's in the water, Gene. Seven nothing, Artesia, in the top of the fourth, across the street. Woo! That ball comes all the way back to the screen on the wild pitch. We're going to score another run as Pacheco comes across the screen. So that'd be ball four. Up next for the dogs, number eight, Jesse Armendariz. So Jack draws a walk. Armandaris, who's singing, scored a run. Early part of this inning. Everybody that batted in the second inning, except for Estrada and Byer, scored. And this is Armandaris' second at bat. Pitch is high for ball one. Football won the back to back state championship this year. First time in like 25 years the girls got to the final four. I saw that. At the state basketball tournament. Pitch is high for ball one. Or ball two. Ball two. But Ronnie's being the state championship coach of the Lady Bulldogs is it still stands. Still there. Yeah. He can't give it away. <laughs> <laughs> that is a call strength, huh? But I know he was rooting for him. Boys got to the quarterfinals in basketball this year. Watch that. I saw. I think wrestling had some. They have a wrestling program here, Jim. I know. I, uh, over in my old gym. That's right. Foul back for strike two. Matter of fact, in your old office. Uh, really? Yeah. They ripped that all out and built a building. Oh, really? And that's their practice facility now for wrestling. Yeah. Glad they're getting you some. And the pitch. Swung on. Foul straight back. Two balls, two strikes. This has been a long half inning. Uh, 11th batter. 11th batter. Seven runs. Only three hits. Okay. And the pitch. Curveball. Just high. Second pitcher. Yep. All three. See, I think we've had about uh, one, two, three errors. Four wild pitches. <laughs> and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> <laughs> and a swing and a fly ball to left field. Left field and goes over under and makes the play for out number three. So mercifully for Mia Mira, this inning is over. His arm bears flies to the left. But again, the Bulldogs score seven runs. Three hits. I don't say three runners. <laughs> One hit. Score. Seven zip. After two. We'll be right back after this.
Presbyterian Medical Services, strengthening the fabric of our communities. Stephen, you've been drinking. Give me your keys. Hand over the keys. It's the right choice. Never drink, then drive. This message from the Eddy County DWI program. And we're back here at Brainerd Baseball Park in Artesia, New Mexico. Gene Dow along with the voice of the Bulldogs. Back in the day, Jim Wilbur. Glad you could make it back to do some play-by-play with us this week. Well, it's, it's a pleasure now to come back. It's always a pleasure to be back here to As we look out over That's right. That's another <laughs> Jim, Jim Wilburnism. It is pretty with the refinery out there and all the twinkling lights. And let's see. Who's going to lead it off here? Gosh. Caden uh, Dingley. Gonna get his first at bat. In a while. In there for call. Strike one. That evens a count of one ball and one strike. They're still looking for their first base hit. In for call. Strike three. Yeah, their first Don't two batters walked. Boy. And then it's been strikeouts mostly. Yep. That was uh, that's number, number five. Number one. Mm -hmm. Dylan Jones. And back to the top of the order with uh, Dylan Jones. And the pitch. Swing. Fly ball. Left side. Left fielder going hard. Can't quite get there. Frankie Galindo ran into the wall down there. Okay. <laughs> took my eyes out way after I saw him. It's just on the other side of that wall. Blind in the pitch. Curveball. High. You start to pitch a swing on right back to the pitcher. Nice grab that time by Usher. We flip over the first base for number two. One to three for the second out. It's hard to believe that uh, you get to the age where you have an eight in front of you. Up next to bat number 10, <laughs> And when did that happen? <laughs> Last October. Last October. Yeah. I didn't know if it was like the old school odometers. Does it kind of roll over and start <laughs> over again? You know, I was saying the other day, it just seemed like the other, not that long ago, that Lana had that clock picking up to the year 2000. Yep, yep. We all thought we were going to die. Oh, gosh. <laughs> all the planes are going to fall out of the sky. I think, I think there was an elevator in Australia that messed up. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> Ball one to Blaze Thomas. Oh, he got oh, hit. He got hit. Yeah. I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> you know, uh, do you remember Michael Carl? Oh, yeah. Now, Betty for the Patriots. He was hanging Number around four, with us Randy on that Antonio. New Year's Eve, that Y2K. And they had the, I think it was the first year they started to work on the Heritage Parking lot. That was the start of the Main Street. So Lon is there, Mike is there, get the band. You ever seen him? We get to midnight, and I turn to kiss Lana, and there's Michael. Sweet. Kissing her? I was turned to kiss her mid at midnight, and there was Michael instead. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said Michael was there kissing Lana. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, he was in my way. Oh, <laughs> he was wanting it. I didn't want to kiss him. <laughs> oh, ball one. <laughs> it's like, ooh, get out of here. Sweet, miss. 
for Stricter. Another strikeout. That's six for Usher Wood. No runs, no hits. Okay, I'd like to thank a few more sponsors. Boy. Totem Well Service, Nobody. Western Bank, Score Charlie Field Service, Forest Tire two and a half. Company, Hold on Desert seven. Hill Electric Supply, Yamira Zero. We'll be back. Sweat Construction, J.S. Warden Son, Giles Incorporated. Check it, check it, check it, check it out. Introducing the new and improved taste of Pepsi Zero Sugar. Now more delicious. Zero never tasted so good. Try it now. What if you could look forward one year, four years, 40 years? What does the future look like? How will you ignite it? This is where the future gets fuel, where ideas come to life and identities flourish. This is where we define opportunity as individuals and as a pack. Being a logo is about so much more than the classes you take. It's about the mark you make on your world. Because the journey starts here, but it never ends. What will you ignite? Welcome back here to Brainerd Baseball Park in Artesia, New Mexico. And it's now the Maddie Artesia the Bulldogs, Baseball Arminitis. Tournament. Day one, and the Bulldogs playing their first game against the Miyamira Patriots. And they lead uh, seven to nothing here in the bottom of the third inning. Rick Almendares will come to the play. Ricky singled and uh, scored a run back in the second inning. Seven runs, seven points. On the line and the first pitch. Well, side for ball one. Ricky, uh, football player, basketball player. He looks like a football player. Big fan. Swing and miss for Strickland. Yeah, when they played Lovington in Lovington the first time in the district, Lovington had a young man physically same size as Ricky. Whenever Ricky came into the game, they would put that <laughs> kid in the game. But Ricky was a little more athletic. Swing and miss for strike two. He was not intimidated. <laughs> he looks like he could break that bat in his hand. <laughs> Bounces up there for ball two. I believe he got to play in the Red Green All-Star game. Oh, he did? They play that here again? They did, and they're going to play it here for, I think, the next five years. Mm -hmm. Coach Mondragon got that negotiated. Now, is that basketball or football? Football. Football. Basketball, they have that up north. What did Mondragon He's on the coaching. He's on the coaches. Oh, uh, I see. The coaches Association. I see. Four. Matter of fact, the uh, basketball all-star game for this week. Now back the Bulldogs, Jim oh, And uh, basketball also. Yeah, they have it the week after the season ends. You don't do it to the coaching school. No. Not. And uh, Lauren Wagner is representing Artesia. Girls hmm. this weekend. Boys getting by. <laughs> Eric said this morning, and I did not commit it to my brain cells. Oh. <laughs> Is your folks, that's David Hammond. I'm sure they did. Is that number 32 that's played Jeff Whitmire? Well, I can't see. He's not close up. <laughs> I have him next on my roster. No, I think I can. Ooh, really All the way back to the screen for another little bit. 
And that will allow Armandez to go on down to second. Now that's a courtesy runner for Ricky. Yeah, not quite the same stature, is it? Well, actually, since he's playing first, that would be a, that'd be a substitution. Because uh, uh, catcher, pitcher. Substituted back in uh, yeah. one substitution. That's what I'm saying. He can, He'll come, he can come back in yeah. once. Once. I'm not up on my rules anymore. Well, the one I never did figure out was in basketball. You know, it used to be six fouls, one and one. Mm -hmm. And then on, on the seventh foul, you get. But they changed that up this year. It's. Uh, I saw a couple of high school games and I couldn't figure it out either until my son told me what was going on. Pitches outside. So what was his three. explanation? <laughs> they changed the rule, Dad. No, <laughs> <laughs> There's your answer. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> okay, so what is the new rule? <laughs> well, they just changed it. <laughs> That's funny. Popped it up, back out of play. What the barking guy likes to do on foul balls is he'll move. Because mm -hmm. the ball goes into the field with the cows. <laughs> okay. The moo cow. The moo cow. <laughs> That's right. Swung, okay. drive out into right center field. That's going to drop for a base hit. Could be extra bases. Oop, they cut it off out there, but the runner will come around and score. So the RBI single, Jeff Whitman. Now back for the ball. Scores. And it's 8 0. Correct. The end of the plate, Huffman. The catcher. Well, they have just started oh. the basketball game. Oh, I got to see some of it then. Yeah, yeah. That's 19 24 in the first half, and they play what, 20 minute halves? Yep. So it just started. Swing and a miss for Strickland. And I'm, I'm not a better. So what is uh, on the budding odd, betting odds, the spread? NC State plus five? That means they get five points if you bet on them. Start the game five to nothing. So they have to win by five. Mm -hmm. Or more than. Okay. You push it this far. High pop up behind second base. <laughs> he made that look interesting, didn't he? Yeah. But he caught it. He did. Up uh, next for the Bulldogs, number 17, Frankie Gallardo. Better than the last time he's popped up. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Kind of did a little spin around. Hey, look what I got. Lindo comes to the plate. Lindo had the big blast so far for the Bulldogs. A base clearing drive to left center field wall. As he drove in three runs. And the pitch runner goes. Throw is not going to get there in time. Catcher, I must, don't believe has a strong double. <laughs> I've been watching him in these warm-ups. He always bounces it to second base when, after they get ready to start the game. So the Bulldogs will go every time. I believe that's a scouting report. I believe so. <laughs> you can run on this guy. You can go. Here's the pitch way outside. Comes back to the screen. Another wild pitch. And the runner goes on down to third base. Runners, Jeff Whitman. So is, is it, it's 20 minute halves? Or two, 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 two minutes. Right. They played three minutes and no one has scored. 
Okay, I watched watch Texas and Colorado State before I came up here this afternoon. Colorado State was hit 8 2, and then they went 13 minutes without scoring. Oh, my goodness. Texas only had, what, 27 points at half, but it was 27 and 11. So is your bracket busted already? No, I didn't do it this year. Okay. All four. I, uh, the way my eyes are, I just didn't want to see. Now batting for the Bulldogs. <laughs> Here I am Second looking at this thing. Four, <laughs> but I didn't want to sit. No. This year. No. That's another conference on the mound. Seven years ago, I had cataract surgery in the right eye. And the doctor messed it up, redid it, messed it up again. So for seven years, I, I, have, I look and I see things that makes my head spin. Mm -hmm. So I finally found this doctor. He said, I think I can fix it. He's ahead of there. I department there at Texas University, and so he operated on it last March. I have three stitches in it, and he's going to take one stitch out a month. So when I bat my eyes, I can feel the stitches. Mm -hmm. and it gives you stigmatism, so everything in my right eye is real close. Mm. But he said when those stitches come out, if you look through a real small hole like this, everything's clear as a bell. Wow. So we have a pitching change. So another one? Yes. Oh, goodness. I want to tell another story. Well, can you tell it after we take no. a break? Yeah. No. All right. We'll be back uh, here from the Brainerd Baseball Park in just a minute. But uh, and tell more stories and tell you what's going on <laughs> with the ball game. Maybe. Maybe. Let's see. I'm trying to find the commercial I want to play. <laughs> There it is. It's right there. All right, we'll be right back. Number four will be the new pitcher. Number four. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Man, aren't, aren't we blessed? You, you think about who we're connected to as Christians. For those who have heard and believed and repented and confessed and been immersed in a watery grave of baptism and is, are living faithfully each day for Jesus, and you're blessed because you have a relationship. You have a relationship with God, the Creator, and His Son who was there with Him and also with their spirit. You know, that, that in itself should just really make us all very happy, all very uh, very joyous in, in so many ways, and joyous in all kinds of different circumstances, whether their life is going great or, or whether there's even a trial in life because of what I get from that. And maybe you're out there and you're wondering, well, how do I get that? Well, come visit us at the Hermosa Church of Christ and let us begin a Bible study with you and let us introduce you to God the Father and God the Son and God the Spirit. here at Brainerd, and the third pitcher of the night for the Patriots takes the hill, number four, Brady Antonio. Bulldogs with the runners at first and third now. And the runner will intentionally get caught off, hoping to draw the throw as the runner comes home, and he is in there safely. Oh, they caught him out. No, he said safe. Oh, I thought he said oh. No, he was, he was doing this. Oh, I tell you, I can't see. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm looking at a monitor that helps me out a little bit. So so they try to get, they throw, Galindo goes, drawing a throw, mm -hmm. which they do, but they were keeping an eye on Jet. And as soon as Jet took off for home, they threw it home. Jet was safe. And on that play at the plate, Galindo goes around to third. Sure. And the Bulldogs lead nine to nothing. So he'll go to second on the strike. Drive down in the left center field. That's going to fall for a base hit. And the runner at third will come into school. There's the magic number 10, man. Okay, so that's a Up base hit. Right? That is. Okay. Estrada. 10 0 here in the third. So. I have one out. We saw that. We must have turned it off the cross the street. 
No. So I've got 10 to nothing. What do you have, Jim? That's what I have. You got, uh, so Whitmire's first name is Jet? Uh, uh, Whitmire, yes. J-E-T-T. -T. Oh, I, I saw it was Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> That's his third cousin twice removed. So it's Jet. Yes, Jet. Like Benny and. B. <laughs> Use the pitch. High. Oh, for strike one. <laughs> <laughs> High in the zone. <laughs> High in there for strike one. <laughs> Two and one now to Estrada. Jovi has that problem, too. He starts calling the pitch before the umpire does. Mm -hmm. and we've all done that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> once or twice. Well, it's quite obvious that I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Foul back. <laughs> Zena. Just because he's there and we're up here. And he yeah. gets paid to do it. Not wrong. <laughs> Always call better from the stands. That's true. And when I was really good, was when I was a baseball player. I never missed one. Really. <laughs> <laughs> so what were your signs? My signs were the signs that we used in 1960 in the nearest high school. <laughs> I wonder if they're still using them today. Oh, I got it. Oh, here comes a pitch all the way back to the screen. And Quintus will wind up at third base. <laughs> I was saying about that the, the signs that you used? Yeah. It was good. Across the shirt was steel. The belt was bunk. Inside for ball four. Yeah. Now, did you have, like, um, next for the Bulldogs. if I wipe across the shirt Number 15, first? Brent yeah, you had an Usherwood. Yeah, okay. Skin, skin, or hat, bill. Right hand, right knee. You can change the indicator. Right hand. And now they got those fancy little armbands and they just call out a number. Yeah. I remember, who was our coach for so many years? We went to uh, Dale Bohanna. Number one after him. Oh, Clay Foster. Clay Foster. He's one of the five of them. The wrist, the wrist band. The wrist band. Let's see, who we got at the plate? Pacheco? Yep. Runners at the corners, first and third. Yep. Runner goes, a little swinging bump. Throw to first base, it's a wild throw. Everybody's gonna be safe. One run will score, two runs will score. That went way up the first base line and they had to go chase it down. Let's see. Yeah, that's an error. Batting number 18, Jack Byers. The runner at third is. Oh, nice. Byers comes to the plate. And okay. So I have 12 to nothing. 12 it is. Okay. So runners at second and third. And the pitch. High for ball one to Jack. Wow, low scoring game. Nine to nine. <laughs> oh, 12 to nine. DJ Horn, three point jump shot. Yeah. NC State. In there for call, struck one to Jack Bar. Of course, that's what's on the radio tonight. Wood Mudman threw over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe maybe. Not really exciting. Pitch is high for ball, too. 
Let's see. 11 to nothing in the fifth, so the softball game is concluded. Artesia wins. And it looks like Joby says he's doing 10, 2, and 6 tomorrow, unless he hears from me otherwise. 10, 2, and 6. That's kind of like drinking Dr. Pepper. <laughs> oh, 10, 2, and 4. I remember the old Mountain Dew slogan. Do you remember their slogan? Um, Way back in the day when they had the hillbilly on the bottom. Uh, I should, but I don't. It'll tickle your innards. <laughs> Takes for ball three. Three and twos again to Jack Byer. It'll <clears throat> tickle your innards. I used to drink a lot of Mountain Dew when I got my first job at the radio station there in Iowa. Ball four. Well, that's what uh, people in Appalachia fed their babies. Y'all batting for the Bulldogs. <laughs> you know, I Jesse read that Armin somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't afford milk, but they feed them Mountain Dew. Teeth would rot. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up. Yeah, we've been asked to make a post about Lauren Wagner. You know, I just mentioned she's representing in the North South All Star. Mm -hmm. The only Lady Bulldogs selected to play. One of three from our entire district. Second team All-Star, All-State. Schwan, ground ball out to the shortstop, by the shortstop, out into left field. One run will score. And Throw to sliding second. into second safely. Was Armandettis. So would you say, oh, I'd say that dogs. was a hit. Number 25, oh, yeah. Ricky Armandettis. See, so runner scored. Yep. Jack Myers hustled all the way around to first base. And Armandaras went to second on the play. Mm -hmm. So I have 13 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and six is 13. Yep. Still. Still. <laughs> Has been for a while. Pitches outside to you. Big old Jesse Armandettis. He's two for three tonight. And the pitch. Swing and a miss for strike one. So for the third consecutive inning, the Bulldogs have batted it out. We have enough ink. <laughs> you have enough paper. I dug up your old sheets. Yeah. Somebody spilled coffee. I, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> I took them with me to Hobbs and I had them in the tub. Yeah. And I thought, I'll just set my coffee cup in the corner of the tub. Yeah. It'll be just fine. <laughs> it wasn't. No. It smelled good, though. I drive to center field. And center fielder goes back and makes the play. But it's a sack fly. Sack fly. Tagging up, coming in to score from third base. Is up next for the dogs, number 32, Jet Whitmire. So I have 14 to nothing. That's what it is. And Jet Whitmire will come to the ball. Fourteen zip. If we get one more run, that'll be it. I think they're doing that. Let's see. Do I have any of my paper? Ball? Swing and a miss. For strict one. I don't know if they're doing the same after uh, softball. Softball is fifteen after three, ten after five. Fourteen and it's three, so maybe they're doing the same one. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, we're going to find out right now. That wild pitch comes back to the screen and the run scores. And 
Is that gonna be it? Hey. That looks like it. Guess not. So I have 15 of them. It is 15. And one and one on Whitmire. Yep. I uh, read more about Lauren Wagner, yes. second team All-State, first time in 10 years a Lady Bulldog has been selected to the second team or higher. Mm. Would KSVP be willing to post or announce her achievements? Well, I think we just did. Mm -hmm. I'm proud to do so. Yeah. And uh, the game is Saturday. Well, look. Break, blah, blah, blah. No coaches are able to attend. So any support for her from the community would be welcomed and appreciated. So she's like representing all by herself. It's there by herself. <laughs> yeah. They sit out in the left field. Coming to the plate for the Bulldogs, number 30, Caden Beauregard. So let's see. I'm going to find out when and where the game is. How's that? We got a pinch back. We do. Boy, go. Uh -huh. Batting for Huffman. I believe so. Oh, I don't have that player in my. I, did, I ran out of time, and we had like <laughs> 20, 20 names on our roster today. So that's Caden Beauregard. That's number 30. Yep. It is. K A D E N. I like the name. Yeah. Heard a lot of those when I lived in Mississippi. Yeah. Beauregards. See, he's number 30. And I want to save. And he's going to bat. Are we ready, Jim? Oh, I'm just so. Okay. Which is outside the board guard. I believe Mira Mira may have a long year. Yeah, it does seem like that. Let's see. Okay, that's him. Swung a foul down the third base line for strike out. Question. No, I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I said, when and where is the game? Exclamation point. <laughs> I thought, no, that's not a statement. That's a question. I try to punctuate. I don't always succeed. Right out into left field. That's a base hit. It is. Winner goes around second, but besides better of it, it's easy. Now, coming to the plate. Left fielder did a good job of getting the ball back. He hit so hard. So, Borgard with this pinch single. And to the plate comes Belinda. Frankie's walked. Scored a couple of runs. Oh, I did get that. Okay, cool. I'll find out. I'm, I'm hearing from uh, Mr. Wagner, and we'll find out. I know it's this weekend, and apparently it's Saturday, but I find out when and where the swing and a miss for Strickland. Because it'd be nice if there were some Bulldog fans go up there and yeah. cheer Lauren on. She did have a great year this year. You don't know where it's at? I'm trying to find out. So. <laughs> Pitches in the dirt, and uh, indifference by the Bulldog runners. They're just going to stay where they're at. That was Danny Parker's favorite. Pure indifference. <laughs> he couldn't wait for that to happen? Yep. Yeah. He loved it. When, when they would go to second and they wouldn't throw. Pure indifference. <laughs> we just don't care. <laughs> just don't care. <laughs> In there for call strike two. Nowadays you just go, man. Yeah. <laughs> Catcher indifference, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's the pitch. Outside. 
He and I have gone on some interesting trips. I, that's <laughs> what I understand. <laughs> uh, well, he helped us with football one year. Uh, more so, than that, yeah. He's our sideline reporter. Yeah. Ah, fly ball. Left field. Left fielder moves over. And Base hit. And Everett, well, I probably there. Now, Betty for the Bulldogs, Jed Fuentes. And everybody hold, well, they go to third. Stop yeah, there. They just, <laughs> they didn't want to go. They stopped. Runner in difference. Runner in difference. <laughs> when you get to this point, just call the game. <laughs> it's 15 to nothing. 15 to nothing. And you're trying not to score. Oh, <laughs> you're going to have to now, though. <laughs> Oh, the left fielder falls down. Ball goes to the wall. They'll just do the merry-go-round. No, they're going to stop. Right. After yeah. one run. Coming to the plate for Artesia, number two, Naya Estrada. Nice. All right. I couldn't see it. I, it was I think he did. So I have 16 to nothing. And the base is still loaded. It's still two outs. Another two outs? I have two outs. Okay. I had the. Well, I, f I forgot about this whole other line of. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had the pop up to the second baseman. Yeah. An hour ago. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, sacrifice fly by Ricky. Yeah. Was out number two. And that was 20 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> Another whole half inning. Empire's getting in on the act now. Ball way outside for call strike two. <laughs> Couldn't call him out. Nia Strun, quarterback on the football team. Played, yep. Played on the basketball team. Is he a senior? He is a senior. Is he the young man from Carlsbad? No, 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 you're talking about Jesse, yeah. and he injured his uh, an injury early in the football season, so he missed most of the football season. Hmm. But he got to go to a uh, pretty exciting camp down in, uh, I think it was down in Mobile, uh, all-star football camp. As a quarterback? No, as a running back. Mm -hmm. Je not, not nine, Jesse did. Oh. Uh, one, uh, young man injured his uh, oh. leg. Great experience. Ooh. I believe. You're going to have to score now because that hit him. Well, and it was ball four anyway. Now batting for the Bulldogs, number 15. I have 17. Brent Usherwood. Oh, I think you're right. Okay. The bases are still loaded. And there's still two outs. And uh, Coach, you're going to go out and say, does anybody else want to pit? <laughs> Have, now, have you ever had to do that? No. Okay. Although, do you remember when Artesia played Tucumcari in Tucumcari? Oh, many times. And uh, remember, we because I was at home listening. I think me, you, you, we get up by ten, and then Coach Bohannon, he was the coach at the time. He put in some other players, and then they'd come back. And, one point on the radio, you said, "Is anybody listening?" And it was me and Ronnie Noll. Ronnie Noll. <laughs> Ronnie said he listened to every. Inning. This is the third baseman, number 11, Caden Demon, who's going to come in. And pitch. Number 11. You want to take a break? Yeah. Maybe we'll take a break here, and we'll be back We're with more. Too far. Uh, yeah, we got to get our notes lined up. We'll get another sheet of paper for him. <laughs> we'll be back in just a minute.
Need business cards? Think Inc. How about photocopying, black and white printing, or faxing service? Think Inc. Need to put together a brochure or even desktop publishing? Think Inc. Incredible Printing. For all your printing needs and fast, friendly service, Incredible Printing is the only name you need to know. Visit our location at 514 West Main Street in Artesia, right across from the Derrick floor. For any and all of your printing needs, Think Inc. Incredible Printing in Artesia. Attention high school students and parents. ENMU Open House Spring Preview Day is Saturday, March 23rd. Future Greyhounds can get information about admission and scholarships, meet with the faculty to talk about potential majors, get a specialized campus tour, and win great prizes, including a $500 scholarship. Don't miss out on this great opportunity to experience ENMU. Sign up today at enmu.edu slash open house. Eastern New Mexico University, student success. That's what we're about. Now batting for the Bulldogs, number 15, Brad Usherwood. <laughs> Jim, Jim, tell me stories. <laughs> we, you know, we were talking about, Jim asked me, do we have anybody watching? And I said, yeah, there's 46 people. Our numbers are going up. You know why? Softball game is over with, and so yeah. people are coming over to check on the baseball game. So we welcome you back. We are still, Bulldogs are still batting in the bottom of the third. Can you tell what the number of the young man batting is? Uh... Not with this shot, but I'll, uh, let me look out the window here. Uh, that is 15. 15. Yeah, that's somebody that Brent we Usherwood. Oh, okay. He was not batting before. He had a DH. That's why. Yep. Okay. So Usherwood's batting. That's right. For himself now. That's. I think that's how they rule that. Yeah. Ground ball out into left field. Base hit. Let's see if we're going to score more than one. Yeah, nope. you're just gonna the merry-go-round continues. So if you're just joining us because you've been watching now, softball, 18, Eddie, Bulldogs, Eddie Bulldogs won their game, but the Bulldogs, they didn't score in the first, but they scored seven in the second, 11 so far here in the third. They lead 18 to nothing. And uh, back to uh, Puentes. Pops it up on the right side. He caught it. Oh, right. Oh, right. Uh, first base. First base. Yeah. For the third. All right, Bulldog baseball team would like to thank the following sponsors. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, 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 six, seven. Eight, Joel's Heavy Duty Towing. Eleven runs. McCuller and Sons Welding. I can't feel it. Primary right. Residential Mortgage. We lead 18 to nothing. We'll be back. Incorporated. H&R Block. Riley Exploration. Hi, my name is Chance with Trustmark Roofing and Windows, and here's what you should expect during your window inspection. Upon my arrival, we receive a 15-minute courtesy call letting you know I'm on the way. Once I'm in your home, I'm going to be checking for moisture indication, functionality, and any kind of energy efficiency improvements to the inside and outside of your home. After my inspection, I'll give you my professional opinion, and then you can decide whether you want a no-obligation quote. Myself or the office will contact you to set up a date when I can show you my products and options to best suit your needs. So when choosing windows, choose Trustmark Roofing and Windows. Our goal is to give you a five-star service and get you what you deserve, and that's the best. Welcome back to Brainerd Baseball Park in Artesia, New Mexico. I'm the need to grow past our basic capabilities and experience the impossible will forever. The need to grow past our basic capabilities. Play by play. Yeah. The Bulldogs are leading right now, 18 to nothing. And I had a uh, friend of ours send me a text to ask you a question. Tommy Salisbury asks. Did you make Coach Wilburn a pot of beans? <laughs> Favorite story. Teaching. Many, many, many years ago. Leading up for the Patriots. Uh oh. Can we tell it First on? Stop, the, oh, we're not on the radio. Oh, it's a, it's an hour long. Oh. <laughs> well, apparently we have time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Uh, here's the pitch in there for call. Strike one. Let's see who's up here. It's uh, Seth Jones. Uh, Seth Torres? You have Torres? Yeah, I've got Jones. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I told you, I, I had eye operations. I know, I know. When I looked at that, it looks like Jones to me. It might have been Torres. Anyway, for strike one. Not going to complain. They still have any bases. I don't show them with any hits. Um, no hitter going, and we're hit 18 or nothing. And the only runners have been two walks and a hit pitch back. First two batters of the ball. Mm -hmm. so no. That's number five, so that's Torres. The Beanie Winnie story I would tell once a year to every class I had that year. And I told him, if you ever ask me, I will never tell you. <laughs> but the one day I'll come in and I don't feel really prepared today, I will tell you that story. So they're all like that. That's when I was in the Army and I went overseas on a troop ship. Foul back to the screen. That's sick after eating beanie beans. <laughs> so it's not a story you really <laughs> Not while you're eating your post-game snacks or whatever. But it, they all liked it because we didn't do classwork that one period. <laughs> <laughs> so they were always trying to get me to Well, we learned about the beanie weenies. Mm -hmm. I guess he struck out. And he did. And Coming to the plate, number three, Diego number Gonzalez. Okay. And to the plate is Diego Gonzalez. He struck out swinging in his last appearance. Swinging in a miss. He's still swinging. I don't have grades, but me and Mira looks pretty young. Yeah. Swinging a miss. One thing about uh, Diego, he does not go down looking. He's seen five pitches and he's swung it on. He took that one for cold strike three. Another strike. It's three in a row for him. Uh, Usherwood? Usherwood, yeah. You must have told it to Tommy, and Tommy game. must have heard Oh, yeah. Everybody heard it at one time or another. Did they ever have any for a player? It's run on foul off to the screen. We've got two outs on the game. School classroom in 1990. Mm. We went back though. Yeah, uh, but uh, I mean, I went to night school and uh, uh, swing and a miss for strike two. Oh, that's, that's it. oh strike three. Strike three, yeah. Well, that was a quick up and down. <laughs> one, two, three. Yeah. No one's no his no airs all about this strike out. 18 more nothing. sponsors at this time, folks. Southwest Concrete, Zen Care Family Wellness, Guy Chevrolet. Get your tickets now as Red Zone presents a night with C.J. Stroud, Saturday, April 13th at the Bulldog Pit in Artesia. Previously announced as a night with Jason Witten, Jason became unavailable, so C.J. Stroud stepped up to take his place. C.J. is the 2024 Offensive Rookie of the Year with the Houston Texans and two-time Heisman Trophy finalist. Admission is free, but you must have a ticket to enter. Jason Witten printed tickets are still good, and remaining tickets are available at the Artesia Chamber of Commerce. This invitation is courtesy of H.F. Sinclair. Excited about C.J. Stroud coming to Artesia.
Pressure Services LLC in Artesia has immediate openings for experienced vacuum truck, kill truck, and hydrovac operators. Operators must hold a Class A CDL or Class D CDL, at least two years of experience, and be at least 25 years of age. All positions require a clean driving record and must be able to pass a DOT drug and alcohol screen. Pressure Services offers great pay with IRA benefits and employer contributions toward health benefits. Please apply in person at 402 West Main in Artesia. Inside the age safety facility equal opportunity employer hey we're back and uh, Jim Wilburn is with us helping us out with the play-by-play -play. Bulldogs lead 18 to nothing bat here in the bottom of the fifth and Jeffrey uh, I'm gonna let you tell everybody what happened in the softball game the softball game was a lot of fun. The girls just killed it. Um, seven. I know there were five home runs for sure, and one in the park home run, but there might have been. <laughs> it was a great game. The girls all did a, a great job and just shut them out. Great pitching, great hitting. Who did they play? They played Las Vegas Robertson. It was a, it was a really fun game to broadcast. I'm sure this game is too. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's. If you like uh, the home team wing, eighteen to nothing. The other team not getting a hit. It's just not a competitive ball. Oh uh, yeah. We'll see the competition boost as the. Have you been here throughout the day in the baseball the Bulldogs, side? Number eight, Switching back and forth. Baseball this morning, softball this afternoon. You know who won the games this morning? I know Carlsbad beat Goddard. Oh, they did? And that was a – it was a close game until uh, Goddard decided to have four errors and one inning. Yeah. Maybe they only had three, but they scored six runs. So. <laughs> but it was a, a good game up until the six, sixth inning. I believe – that's not Jack, though, is it? We must have a pinch batter. That's a base hit. Got a base hit, and I'm just going to walk down the second when he could have had a double. Now off the back for the Bulldogs. Now the big guy. The little guy. Ricky Armendariz. <laughs> He was announced as the little guy. <laughs> you drunk again, Al? <laughs> Jesse Armandettis, the little guy, as they call him out here. Use the pitch. Low it away. We're going to see if we can't get the at least who the uh, teams are that won today. So we know what's happening tomorrow. That would be good to know. Scorch down the left field line. Wow. Just 3-11 in the half. 30-29, to 29, Texas Tech. Sounds like every game they played all year. Taking a three minute, they're taking a TV timeout. Pitch to Armand is taking high. Oops. You've got two and two? I've got two and two. Okay. Ooh, high and tight for ball three. Yeah, I know Carlsbad beat Goddard today, but we'll see how the others did. Deming and uh, ball four. So I'm in Dennis does the ball. Now batting for the Bulldogs, number 22, Diego Wesson. You got a pinch hitter here. You do. Okay. Diego Wesson. Swing and a miss 
for strict one. Runners at first and second, nobody out. 18 to nothing, Bulldogs, as we play here in the bottom of the fourth inning. It's, uh, you know, Gene, looking back, yeah. the Bulldogs went down in order in the first inning. One, they two, did. Three. They did. <laughs> two strikeouts and a ground out. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know about you, but my score sheet is blue. <laughs> There for Strike one. Strike two. See, it looks like we batted 11 in the second inning, 18 in the third inning, <laughs> and uh, three so far here in the fourth. Call strike three. For the first out. That's, uh, now batting for the Bulldogs, number 30. That's kind of a tough Beauregard. thing to do there. Let your batting average go down one and just take him call strikes. He, he wasn't, he wasn't going to swing. Yeah. Pitches outside for ball one. Well, we know the Lady Dogs, Lady Bulldogs won their game tonight. And Joby's helping out. He's doing... Uh, Doing softball games for us, and Goddard games for us. Baseball? Mm -hmm. Unless you want to. No. <laughs> I, I couldn't get that out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> Surprised is not the word. <laughs> I went, oh, I got hit. I stopped by the radio station when I got here today and was talking to Tana. And she said, yeah, Joby's doing the guard game. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? That's right. She says, yeah, we do guard games. Coming to the place for the dog, what? number 17, Frankie Galindo. What? We, uh, Artesia, Roswell High, Goddard, and NMMI, high school and college. And then I'm right. Mm hmm. No, I love my brothers. Yeah. yeah. It was just a, a competition thing those many years ago. So, uh, our local people do got a game? No, no. We, we, uh, Chris White, Chris Deck, and uh, Chris Royball. Oh, okay. And Henry. Okay, so it's oh, okay. That, that makes sense. Well, who was it that one year we went to Carlsbad and did somebody? We did. We did Goddard. Goddard and Carlsbad. Yes, there was. Uh, <laughs> it was one year nobody was covering Roswell or Goddard, yeah. and we went. Uh, uh, Sam Jernigan was coaching the Rockets. And we went. We had an open date or an open Friday, and we went down to do the radio for Goddard at Carlsbad. And I know what you're fixing to talk about, and that's how we get in the lineups. <laughs> when that popped up, Pop up. he got him. I'm number two. Yeah. Well, I, I, now I forgot that part of the story. Yeah. Up next for the dogs, number four, Jed Fuentes. You, uh, we, we couldn't get the lineup. Jimmy tried to get the lineup. Um, and the coaches were walking right past us on their way upstairs. And we kept asking, them, any of you have a roster? Any of you got a lineup? Any of you got, you know. And then you finally said, well, who is your starting quarterback? <laughs> Can you at least tell me that? <laughs> and we're, we're down here doing the game for you. Yeah. And you won't even let us know who you got playing. For. That's right. And after your kind and gentle nudging, <laughs> about five minutes later, somebody walked down with a note paper and they had written, <laughs> they'd written the names. Sometimes you just got to remind them. 
You know? And I remember saying to you, I said, hang on to that paper because you're going to need it later this year. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting it again. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when you go to places like that or Tucumcari, you got to just give a gentle reminder. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Tucumcari story. <laughs> oh. I can't say on the air what you said at Tucumcari. <laughs> oh, walk a run in there. But it was the truth. It was. <laughs> Makes it 19 to nothing, Gina. I said to you when you said it. I now said, Jim, wait till we two. leave nah, when yes, you say that. Up. Don't say it now. <laughs> I wasn't disagreeing with you. I was just didn't want to get tossed out <laughs> in the cold. I was hoping to get. <laughs> <laughs> that was the goal. Yeah. That's the game Jimmy had to set out in the rain. He did. He did. That's right. Wild pitch back to the screen, and nobody's coming. Well, that's only <laughs> that's only fair. This is uh, this is not fair to those kids out there in purple. They shouldn't have to do this. They may want to think about a 15 after yeah. three. And they do have in football. They have the mercy rule. I mean, they have the running clock, and they have the mercy rule. Mm -hmm. um, basketball has the running clock. Another wild pitch. You, you've you coached, I mean, is. No, I, I would just go out and say, hey, oh, we've had this. Let's go. Oh, oh, let's go. Oh, let's go. Who is, is anybody gaining anything from this? The Artesia players like. Two wild pitches and nobody's tried to score. Yeah. Are they gaining anything? And there's another walk, and that's 20 to nothing. And there it is, 20 to zero. And again, they gather on the mound for Miyamura. Coach, just call the umpire over and say, we're going to go home. It's time. We're going to go eat. Well, they can't leave just yet. Jeffrey's getting the bracket filled out. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. This is. Uh, I've seen. I, I would have to come back and see this. Yeah. I've seen a lot of things, but I've never seen this. 18 and 20. Halftime. And see, where are they? Where are they from? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Halftime in Pittsburgh. 37-33 NC State. 37-33. I don't know if they're going to make another pitching change or what they're going to do. Why don't, we, uh, why don't we take a break? Well, let's do it. And we'll be back to tell you what we think is happening after Need business cards? Think Inc. How about photocopying, black and white printing, or faxing service? Think Inc. Need to put together a brochure or even desktop publishing? Think Inc. Incredible Printing. For all your printing needs and fast, friendly service, Incredible Printing is the only name you need to know. Visit our location at 514 West Main Street in Artesia, right across from the Derrick floor. For any and all of your printing needs, Think Inc. Incredible Printing in Artesia. Hello folks, Martin here from PRMI and Artesia, your hometown lender. Have you been on the fence lately about purchasing or refinancing a home? I know it's a big decision and the interest rates are playing a huge part in that. I'm here to let you know I understand your concern and would like to talk to you about your options. There are financing products available that may suit your budget and I'm the person to talk to. I offer a personal service, fast approval process, and a knowledgeable support staff. So call me at 575-749-6278 and let's discuss your options. PRMI NMLS 3094 is an equal housing lender. It's the Big Savings Produce Sale at Fens Country Market in Artesia. Large Canta Gold Cantaloupes, two for $4. Snack size Haas Avocados, 
three for one dollar. Fresh blueberries, 12 ounces, $2.99 each. Yellow onions, 99 cents a pound. And ripe kiwi fruit, 59 cents each at Finn's Country Market in Artesia. And right now, Coca Cola select flavors, 20 pack cans, $10.99 each at Finn's Country Market in Artesia. We are back. And another pitcher for Miyamura. This time they bring in the third baseman. I thought he had come in earlier, but maybe they had swapped him out. But uh, there he is, number six, Jaden Garcia. He's going to try to get the Bulldogs out. Uh, they have two outs. They just need to get one out here. Gene, he's the left fielder. Okay. All right. I we'll started to say that third baseman wasn't left-handed. <laughs> well, then, uh, then we now we know. He, he was at left field. Okay. Very good. Doesn't matter. Does not matter a bit. No. I, it just struck me weird. We're, was that the third baseman left-handed? <laughs> no. Okay. And there's the first pitch. <laughs> Swung on foul back. I don't even know who's batting. Is I've got it? Usherwood 15, but we'll see. Yeah. Okay. I was going to skip over him because he didn't bat until last inning. Right. Foul ball. So 37-33. Um, Middlebrooks. What am I looking at? That's NC State. Um, Williams has, no, I'm looking at points. Toussaint. Toussaint. Has 13 points. And there's a strikeout to mercifully in this inning. As the Bulldogs scored only twice in that inning, and they lead it now by a score of 20 to nothing. We'll be back for hopefully the last half of the inning of play, top of the fifth, right after this. Check it, check it, check it, check it out. Introducing the new and improved taste of Pepsi Zero Sugar. Now more delicious. Zero never tasted so good. Try it now. Check it out. What's up, Artesia? Andy and Jen here from Faith Kids, and uh, we have some exciting news coming your way. Yes, right here in Morris Field on March the 30th, we will be here for our annual extravaganza from 10 to 1. We're going to have hot dogs, snow cones, mini donuts, Wild West sodas, McAllister sweet tea, lots of yummy stuff. We're also going to have 60,000 eggs for the kids to hunt. Hunt. And then we'll have 20-plus jumpies. It's going to be so much fun for the whole family. It is a completely free event. So make sure to join us here at Morris Field, March 30th, 10 to 1. Well, we're back here at Brainerd Baseball Park. And brought Jim Wilburn back to help us with the play-by-play. -play. Jim and I did. We worked together for a number of years. You moved here, what, 91? 91. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 2013. That's right. I started in 82. Yep, helping out with football, right? Or was it football? Or? I did football and baseball. And you know, I retired from coaching. And I did uh, girls softball okay. and baseball. Mm -hmm. From the 80s on, I just didn't do boys and girls basketball when I was still coaching. Sure. And you, and you tried to coach when your son was playing. No. One time you said, don't throw the ball away <laughs> like that. <laughs> and then you apologized. Mm -hmm. And then I have confirmation. Robots won the state championship in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. First one, you were standing on the bench. You were standing on the, oh, the, the, the broadcast table. Yeah. And I didn't know it until my oldest son, Clay, was there. Was pulling me down. <laughs> I've been there. I'm still trying to figure out how you did that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> but that was exciting time. Wasn't it? So what are your sons doing now? Your daughter. Not for the My youngest son Number played six, on that Garcia. Uh, team is the golf coach at Lubbock Cooper High School right now. Swing and a miss to Jaden Garcia. And Clay is still in Singapore. He works for 
strike two. He retired from Applied Materials, had his own consulting business for many years, retired from that, now he works for Dyson. Mm. Uh, vacuum? Mm -hmm. uh, he, there's another strikeout. Wow, three pitches. Um, Mr. Dyson, uh, you know, he's an English guy. Mm -hmm. Now batting number yeah, 17, in Singapore, and he was going to develop an electric car. I think I remember reading that. So Clay was in the engineering group, and they worked on the electric car for three years. Made two or three prototypes, spent half a billion dollars, <laughs> and he came in and said, not going to be profitable. And Shut it down. Shut it down. Wow. So, Clay said, "Yeah, we spent all that money, and developed, and had the car, and it was running the prototype." And he said, "We just didn't see it was feasible, and I shut it down." But he was able to stay on with the company or find another job. Well, they just transferred him over into another. Okay. And he likes he likes that because it's just an eight to five job. When he worked for five materials, he traveled all over the world. He was in, he never knew where he's going to be. And then when he had his own consulting business, he, same thing. He worked <laughs> Germany, New York. He had had jobs going in Germany, New York, China. Well, he likes the idea of working nine to five. Right? And during COVID, there's another strikeout. During COVID, he worked from home. Yeah. Two down, one more out, and we're out of here, Gino. I don't think we'll have much of a wrap. Up. For the Patriots, no. Eleven, Kaden, uh, they have still not gotten a hit. So yeah, he's uh, no hitter. Mm -hmm. Swing and miss. I am a great grandfather now. Mm. My daughter's uh, my grandmother. My great granddaughter is nearly two years old. Already? Mm -hmm. My mother passed away last year at 97. And I got to see her every day. I remember that. Uh, all, all the time until she passed last year. Or October. October. Oh, come on, guys. Somebody let a ball get loose. <laughs> it's 20 to nothing. One more strike, you know. One more strike. <laughs> and the pitch, and we're out of here. Call him strike three. Three up, three down. Gosh, the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The last eight right, batters so struck out. Thank you guys for coming out. We will see Final you score, 20 to nothing. 20 runs, 11 Since hits, no errors, and seven left for Artesia. No runs, no hits, four errors, and three left for the American. Jim, thank you so much. Thank you, Gino. I enjoyed it. How about a better game tomorrow night? Let's do it. All right. We'll see you then, folks. Thanks for watching.